Yesterday, two students from Colonel Gray High School took time out of their storm day and their studying for exams and tweeting and texting for Bell Let's Talk to talk with me about mental illness. They belong to Stop the Stigma. It's a group they started after students felt the impact of mental illness in their school community. Taylor Meek and Isaiah Hood are grade 12 students at Colonel Gray. Hi, Taylor. Hi, Isaiah. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having us. You started a group called Stop the Stigma. Why? Well, after my sister passed away because of suicide, I realized that something had to be done. Because shortly after, um, there was another student who suffered from mental illness, and he took his own life as well. So then it just, two students within that short period of time, something needed to be done. And since it is such a hot topic that touches everyone, but everybody's afraid to talk about it, then we really thought that there needed to be a group or an outlet for people to feel safe and get more education on the subject. Why did you want to be part of this, Isaiah? I was asked to be a part of it, and I really felt like, obviously, you know, stuff like that happening, you'd really need to raise awareness, show people that they're not alone and it's okay to talk to people, and hopefully that... Seeing us do it, you know, other schools will start groups just like us and everyone will know that someone's there to talk to if they need it. Nowadays, if a kid at your school was feeling like something wasn't right, maybe they didn't know they had depression or anxiety, but they had some symptoms. What outlets do they have? Where can they go to get help? Well, with our group, we work with Kids Help Phone. So we do raise a lot of awareness with showing about how they're always there to talk to and everything. And we do recommend that you do call them or go to their website or anything if you have any questions on your mental health because they are the professionals and they will steer you in the right direction. Whereas we are just here to make you feel comfortable enough to talk about it. And we're not trained guidance counselors and we don't have the tools to make your situation even better but we can make you feel more comfortable about it and give you people to talk to or names or numbers or people who can help you. Mm -hmm. Taylor when your sister died were there students that I'm sure embraced you and gave you support and love but were there students that kind of looked at you like you were somehow different? Um, well, I have a pretty strong based friend group, so they're really supportive. But there were some people who just didn't see me in the same way because they didn't see any signs of it affecting me. And they wouldn't expect that of my sister because my sister and I were like three years apart. So we never were in the same school. And some people didn't even know that she was my sister. But there were some people who came out to me and like let myself know that they had situations the same and that it was okay for me to talk to them, but they wouldn't normally talk about that if it was somebody who didn't suffer from the same situation. Yes, because I think that good things can come out of a tragedy like what happened in your family. And I know that your father is busy organizing events and providing support as well. Not every family can do that, but... It is great for the community. The statistic is, I think, going to become one in four Canadians has a mental illness or will have some form of mental illness in their lifetime. Do you, now that you know more about it, do you believe that? I strongly believe it because there are certain, there are minor cases, there are more severe cases, but it will eventually touch a majority of people because there are so many different varieties of mental illness mm -hmm. and it could be something from anxiety to depression to bipolar disorder and it's just education is really important because you need to know what's going on with your mind mm -hmm. just because it's important to take care of your health as well as your physical health as your mental health. I imagine too sometimes students would need to have a chat with someone because it may be happening with a family member or their parents something like that. Have you come across that at all? Yeah, there are many cases of that because the statistic touches a lot of people. Then there are support groups actually for people who are suffering from mental illness, like their family members are suffering because it is a chemical imbalance. They have to be as educated as the person who is ill. Yeah, because they need to know that they're not intentionally pushing the person away or intentionally making them feel 
excluded or anything like that. It's just, it's the illness and it's the chemical imbalance. Your age group can be a pretty tough one. There's a lot of peer pressure. There are cliques and that is overwhelming to deal with. I know it was when I was a teenager a hundred years ago. Um, <laughs> so do you, do you find that all of that pressure can also bring on things like anxiety in students and they may be having those symptoms and just not know what they're dealing with? I've definitely seen, you know, people like around school, some say, definitely look sad. People like, you know, walking by themselves. Or I've seen people, you know, just listening to music, by, like pretty sad music by themselves. And I have seen it. Like Colonel Gray, like our guidance counselors are like fantastic. And mm-hmm. I like, I just like, like to let them know that, you know, they're there. Thinking back now, like I should have probably like, I should have probably walked in and said something to like, ask them if they're all right. And I didn't at the time, but I, you know, looking back and realizing now that maybe they weren't comfortable sharing it with someone. Yeah. And if I were just to, you know, or not even me, just someone in general, just to go up and ask them, maybe they'd open up. It is a difficult thing to do. Yeah. But I would think in most cases, anyone would be grateful for just a hello. Do you have plans with the group? Any events or activities? Well, last year, to, to, just to tell people that we were around Colonel Gray, we... Um, did various activities such as musical chairs. That was our very first activity together just to show that Stop the Stigma was at Colonel Gray, our group. <laughs> 50-50, we did at the Island Dodgeball tournament to wa- raise money for mental health. And we pied uh, <laughs> a few teachers, volunteered, and a couple students to raise money. It's just like any organization where it's kind of like raising money comes with raising awareness. So it's like we'll drop a few facts here and there at a 50-50 because we actually had the opportunity to be plugged in with Island Dodgeball for the 50-50. So we were able to get a pretty big audience that way. And it was great because we just started the group last year and then we were able to start off that within months of us getting the club going. So then it was great to start awareness and everything. You know, we really let people know that it's really going to be something big, we hope. (laughs) Like now it's becoming a part of the grade 10 gym curriculum because it does have to do with health and wellness. Then mental health is equally as important as your physical health. Just because somebody has a broken arm and everybody can see it, it still hurts. But just because it's going on your head and it still hurts, but people can't see it, then there's kind of like that disconnect there. But it is equally as important to educate yourself on, to learn what's going on with your body. It must be important for you, Taylor, to remember Shalise in this way, to do this for others. Oh, it totally is because... The way that my family looked at it is it was shortly after. And of course, it's like whenever your family goes through something like that, you can either separate or you can come together. And it's all about how you channel your energy from that. And we, with my parents, we decided to do something positive. And my parents have always been involved with Bell Let's Talk because they're both employees. But whenever it affects you and there's a face to it, then it just kind of changes your perspective on it. So we all really decided that it is a great foundation and it's just something that people need to be educated on because after it goes through you, three years ago, we didn't really know what was going on. Like, But now there's so much more understanding and we just look at the situation completely differently and we're all doing this in the memory of Shalise and hoping that using her story, we can help other families. I really appreciate you coming in. I know it's not an easy topic. I'm very grateful. Thanks. Well, thank you for having us and the opportunity. Thanks. Taylor Meek and Isaiah Hood belong to Stop the Stigma. It's a support group at Colonel Gray High School.